It's your girl, The Grown Woman Gamer, and today I'm coming at you to talk about Donovan Mitchell. So it was reported yesterday by Woj and other reputable news sources that the Utah Jazz are open to discussions about the possibility of moving Donovan Mitchell. As far as I'm concerned, this is great news because obviously the Utah Jazz are in somewhat of a rebuilding year. We know that they've already traded Rudy Gobert to the Minnesota Timberwolves. There was this thought that the Jazz were going to build a team around Donovan Mitchell. And while this is a nice idea, the fact of the matter is we've already seen out in Portland and in Atlanta, the building around this very offensively minded guard is not enough to win a championship. Can you have a good team that makes it to the playoffs around a great offensive guard? Absolutely. We've already seen that. The Utah Jazz have made it to the playoffs nearly every year for the last however many years. The Portland Trailblazers, while Damian Lillard was healthy, had some decent playoff runs. But the fact is, is that you can't just have that guard play. You're going to have to have a bit more. And I'm not here to rag on Donovan Mitchell because frankly, I feel like the weaker link in the whole Utah Jazz strategy was Rudy Gobert. You have a guy as big as he is who doesn't average 20 points a game. And I know everyone will come at me and say, well, he's a defensive player, but your number one guy and your number two guy have to both generate offense. Yes, absolutely. You need guys to play defense, but the number one option on your team and the number two option on your team both have to score. It's not a option, it's a must. And to have a player like Rudy Gobert who can defend as well as he can defend, but is virtually non-existent on the offensive end, it's absolutely unacceptable. And so when they, I saw them trade Rudy Gobert, I was like, okay, this is good. But then I was expecting them to also trade Donovan Mitchell because frankly, I think that the whole that whole experiment just needs to get blown up and they should start over. And since they're in a rebuilding year anyway, why not trade both players, get some picks, and truly rebuild? But I, I get it. Donovan Mitchell is an all-star talent and we know what he can do on offense and that's very seductive for a team. So they are going to explore these options but they're also not gonna give up a player who can score 25 to 35 points per game that easily without getting something of equal value in return. And that makes absolutely perfect sense. But some of the places where I feel that Donovan Mitchell could immediately make an impact are the Knicks, obviously. They have some great players like RJ Barrett and Julius Randle. The problem is that the Knicks already pulled the trigger on Jalen Brunson and Donovan Mitchell and Jalen Brunson to me are very similar. This is going to be offensive, but I'm going to say it. Jalen Brunson is like the great value version of Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell would have been a better fit. So I don't know if that's a possibility and it would create some competition there, but Donovan Mitchell, RJ Barrett and Julius Randle would have been a perfect combination in New York. The second team that I would consider as a great destination for Donovan Mitchell are the Heat. The Miami Heat have Jimmy Butler, they have Bam Adebayo, and right now they have Kyle Lowry, Victor Oladipo. The way that they play, Donovan Mitchell will fit right in. They have a very fast paced, aggressive offense that they run through Jimmy Buckets. Jimmy Butler is what I would consider a swing forward. He could be the, he's not really a shooting guard. He's not fully a small forward, but he goes back and forth in between those roles. And at times he's even facilitating the offense as the one bringing the ball up the court. With Kyle Lowry there, he doesn't have to do as much of that, obviously, when Kyle Lowry is healthy and able to run the offense. But with Donovan Mitchell, being very similar, very aggressive player, down for a fast paced offense. Under Eric Spolstra, I think there are certain aspects of his game that would absolutely blossom. And there are so many things about Donovan Mitchell that remind me a little bit of Dwayne Wade. I think that he and Eric Spolstra would be a good fit for each other as far as coaches and players go. And this will be a good place for him. And I think he would fit seamlessly into what they do. So that will be my second choice. And the third destination where I would 
consider moving Donovan Mitchell where it would actually be a good fit is the New Orleans Pelicans. Think about it. A healthy Zion, a healthy Brandon Ingram, if they can somehow manage to keep CJ McCollum and then also add Donovan Mitchell to the mix, they will be an offensive powerhouse. The question would be where they would get their defense from, but having those four players and then maybe having one player to round them out would be amazing. And I think that would be a good place for him. Some people are mentioning the Nets and the Raptors. While I believe the Raptors are a great team, I think that Donovan Mitchell can make a much greater impact on a team like the Pelicans. The Pelicans are a young, hungry team. They have great veteran leadership in CJ McCollum. And when you watch them last year, you can see they have some feisty guards, but I feel like they need one more offensively minded guard to really set that whole thing off. And provided that Zion Mitchell stays healthy, if they're able to add a player like Donovan Mitchell, there is absolutely no reason why they shouldn't be a team that can go pretty far in the postseason. So let me know your thoughts. Do you think that the Jazz should even trade Donovan Mitchell? Do you think they should build around him? And if you do believe that the Jazz should trade him, what would be the best places for him to go and why? Thank you so much for watching my video. Subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, comment whether you agree with me or not, and I'm out.